In this two-part series, I'm going to show you how I keep my kitchen clean and organized. So I think there's some pretty neat, wow, pun, pun intended, tips and tricks that some of you guys could find pretty useful. And this is part one, cleaning. Well, more specifically, deep cleaning. I really only do this like a few times per year. So very few people are stoked to clean their kitchen or really anywhere for that matter. And I mean, I get it. It's not fun. It's not sexy to most, and it's definitely not quick, but it definitely needs to happen. A clean kitchen is not only a safer work environment, but I'd also argue conducive to putting out better food and allowing the creative process to flourish. All right, I have said enough, let's start with the oven. It's tough to keep an oven clean if you love to cook and use it often. Some ovens have a self-cleaning setting that superheats the oven for a long time to burn anything stuck inside clean off. However, I prefer to get the gram off myself because I do a better job. Start by wiping the crumbs together, then use a handheld vacuum or a paper towel to remove them. I like to crack a window to help rid any chemically smelling smells before I start. All said, I find it best to clean on a day when it's decent outside, but it's spring here in Chicago, so I'll take what I can get. This is the oven cleaner that I prefer. Most oven cleaners take time to soak in before you can wipe them off, so this one recommends a couple hours, which is why I'm doing it first. Remove the racks and set them aside. You can spray and wipe these down later separately. Follow the directions in the back of the cleaner. We'll come back to this later. Onto the range. Behold, my embarrassingly gnarly stovetop. Start by filling the kitchen sink with hot water and dish soap. The dish soap will act as our degreaser. Remove these stovetop grates and caps and toss them in the sink to soak. I learned this nifty tinfoil trick from a chef friend of mine. It doesn't look too pretty, but the amount of time it saves you from cleaning is well worth it. Remove the tinfoil from the range and spray it down. Make sure you're using a degreasing cleaner or else you'll be scrubbing all day. Spray her down and wipe her up. I use paper towels to get the food off and a rag to finish the job. So now everything's clean, we're gonna replace the stovetop foil. I've done this enough to be able to eyeball the length, but you can measure it to be more precise if you want. Lay the foil over the burners to make an imprint by lightly patting down the foil, then use a sharp tool to cut around the imprints. Do this for all four burners. I have this awesome like super giant industrial roll of food grade food service foil so I can link that below if you're interested. Meanwhile, scrub the burners and caps with hot soapy water from the sink, dry and put everything back on the stove. Now let's get the microwave in order. Fill a microwave safe bowl with one cup of hot water and one cup of distilled white vinegar, then nuke it for 10 minutes. This is going to help loosen up grimy bits stuck inside the microwave. While that's in the microwave, if you have them, pop off any removable vents which are generally located under the microwave. Simply wash these with hot soapy water and let them air dry before replacing. Don't be tempted to throw these in the dishwasher, the grease could clog it in the long term. After the 10 minutes, remove the vinegar bowl, but be careful because it's super hot. Then take out the spinny dish thing too. Now your microwave should be primed for maximum wipage, so go to town. Oh, and clean the spinny dish thing with hot soapy water. Boom, clean microwave. Now onto surface cleaning. You'd be unpleasantly surprised how vast of a distance grease can travel while cooking. Warm water just won't cut it here. Literally, to clean these surfaces, you have to use a grease cutting cleaner. Wipe the outsides and the insides of your cabinets on top of the fridge, even in your windows and doors. Wipe it all down thoroughly with a rag or a microfiber cloth if you have one. Disinfect your countertops and cutting boards by making a simple sanitizer consisting of bleach and water. I'll link the sanitizer measurements and the conversions below. Spray the sanitizer on your surfaces, then wipe it all off with a damp rag. For cutting boards, spray down with sanitizer, then wash thoroughly with soap and water. You don't want this in your guacamole, trust me. For extra credit, buff any stainless steel appliances with stainless steel cleaner. If you have marble or granite countertops, you should look into specialized non-abrasive cleaners to use on them. Bleach, vinegar, or similar cleaners could cause damage over time. Okay, now let's tackle the fridge. Ah, the dreaded ice box. This is probably the most important appliance in your kitchen and responsible for holding those precious, precious leftovers. To clean, we must first remove all the food. You heard me, all of it. Vacuum up any crumbs and shriveled up food. Remove any drawers or shelves if it's easier for you. Drench a clean rag in hot soapy water and wipe her down. You can use the sink to help clean any shelving. Then wipe everything dry with a clean towel. And I'm really not sure what I'd do without these microfiber cloths. They're incredible at wiping things clean and dry, much better than the average kitchen towel, so I'll link these below. Rinse and repeat in the freezer. Next, we clean the dishwasher. Wipe the inside of the dishwasher down with a one-to-one -one mixture of hot water to distilled white vinegar. This will help remove any stains and gnarly odors. It sounds redundant to clean something that's literally designed for cleaning, but there are some things you should do to maintain a clean dishwasher. Check to make sure the water spouts on the spinner aren't clogged with food or scum. Now we need to clean the filter. Yes, your dishwasher has a filter, and if you're just now finding this out, you probably need to clean it. Do so by dunking it in hot soapy water and remove any gunk from inside. Pop the filter back in, then replace the baskets that I forgot to tell you to remove. 
To eliminate any remaining smellies, fill a glass up with a cup or two of distilled white vinegar, place it on the bottom rack of the machine, and run the washer on its longest, highest temperature cycle. By now, a couple hours should have passed, so let's finish up the oven. Using a rag that you're willing to part ways with, wipe out all of the oven cleaner that we sprayed on earlier with hot soapy water. Now replace the racks and close her up. Nice work, soldier. Your future roasted chicken thanks you. Okay, the sink. The sink is nasty, straight up. Just think about it, all your uneaten food, the cat's food, and whatever else you dump in there. Grime. It's basically like the club for bacteria, so avoid the shit house music and keep it clean. To your empty, dirty sink, sprinkle in a couple spoonfuls of baking soda and drizzle in a couple glugs of dish soap, then scrub it clean. Once scrub, rinse it all out with the hottest water your sink can make. If you have a disposal, we need to clean that too. Fill your disposal with a bunch of ice cubes and dust the top over with some baking soda. The ice will help knock the gunk off the disposal's blades and the baking soda will eliminate the bad odors. Just run the disposal, then finish it off with some hot water. Alright, that's it. All that's left are the floors. I left these for last so that we can clean up after the mess that we made while cleaning. I know, janitorial inception. Trippy. Vacuum the solid crummy bits, then either mop and or wipe away any remaining grime. Now take a deep breath. Namaste, we made it. So yeah, that could look like a lot of work, because it is. I can assure you by the time you're done, you are going to be V satisfied and have a feeling of accomplishment. Maybe, hopefully. So go pour up a cocktail or crack a brew or something NA if you're underage, because you deserve it. That was awkward. <laughs> and as always, thanks a ton for watching, and I will see you next week. So ta-ta, friend. Au revoir. Farewell. Salute. That doesn't make that doesn't make sense.